Hey there, it's Andre with another interview with the Impulsive Thinker podcast for the high achieving ADHD entrepreneur. Today's episode is brought to you by Kadak, the Center of ADHD Awareness Canada. You can get more information at www.kadak.ca. For more information and donations are always welcome. Today, I have Jonathan Rosenberg. He owns a construction company called Teneo Ventures, and they specialize in multi-residential construction and renovations, which also dovetails into being a commercial realtor, and he focuses on multi-residential and commercial sectors. Now, he's also a partner in a growing inflatable water park business. Don't tell me this guy does not have ADHD. Going from construction realty into a water park business. <laughs> Jonathan, thank you for coming and uh, welcome on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Andre. Do um, you just want to give a little more a bit of a background of your history or uh, your entrepreneurial journey for the, the listeners? Yeah, I've pretty much always not been able to have a job. So I've been basically self-employed since I was 12. Because we're um, unemployable. Because we're unemployable. That's how I said it yeah, <laughs> for years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I uh, started with like, uh, you know, when I was 18, got a tree planting uh, contract with the Crown Land Licensee and I'm from Ontario. Um, you know, didn't get it one year, got it the, the next year, and then uh, kind of went from there. So started my business there mostly, and then came out to New Brunswick for university, started buying apartment buildings, put together a pretty good sized portfolio in my early 20s. Uh, did not understand I had ADHD, did not understand my weaknesses, and uh, built up a $25 million business that crashed the ground in my mid-20s. That um, uh, was... Yeah, so that, 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 was, that was a big, huge part of it. Managed to recover from that uh, by the skin of my teeth. Uh, still had to go <laughs> bankrupt uh, through the process because, of course, I got left holding the bag when things fell apart. Too eager to sign all those mortgages. I, like, yep. I said, why, why, would any, why would anyone lend a 25-year-old $20 million? That was the dumbest idea ever. <laughs> I would never do that. Yeah. Um, so, so you yeah, got yourself out of it, got myself out of it, uh, it took a while, um, got involved in a few other businesses, but mostly stayed uh, once we started buying apartment buildings. I mean, basically, I've been doing that now for uh, since 2008. So, you know, have a pretty good set of expertise in there. Um, been involved in a couple hundred million in projects now wow. um, or more, uh, it, it, quite a lot. And so that's been... Uh, and that's really, um, you know, then when COVID hit, uh, oh, I, I got into commercial real estate too, was getting more involved in that, kind of was doing that anyway. One day, uh, uh, someone, a lawyer called me and said, you need to get a license if you're going to start, you know, helping people buy things. Um, so, okay, no problem. Did that. It was a good move. Uh, it's dovetailed nicely into being kind of an all round point stop for investors looking to wow. uh, buy and create um create value through repositioning or renovating and it you know it works well with the with the realtor part as well um so i'm partners in a couple companies um I've got my own construction company now uh my partner and i have been buying buildings ourselves uh, uh commercial and, and residential uh, so my, my my life partner um chelsea and uh yeah and then and then yeah so anyway once covid hit i mean i was busy before and New Brunswick had been getting better and better. Mm -hmm. I mean, St. John, New Brunswick, it was getting better and better. The market was getting better. Cap rates going down, values going up, vacancy going down, more and more interest. And then COVID hit and it was just a wave of interest from Ontario. We, we were the last province to get any form of rent control, which just literally happened two weeks ago, which wow. also made, a big diff made my phone ring off the hook because now the only way to reposition buildings is through significant renovations. Um, so yes, I mean, that's, that's the basic gist of it. It's not a very coherent story, but um, we now have a team of uh, about 20. Uh, we have enough work book for the next two years. I need to basically triple that team over the next, over the next mm -hmm. uh, six months to a year. It's been a ton of demand for, for our services in a, in a market that was pretty sleepy before. So it doesn't have a lot of capacity, struggles with a lot of, uh, uh, for years, all the good workers, left the younger workers and so we have an older workforce and but you know funny enough now I have a team that's made up of mostly people from Ontario that have been uh, <laughs> have been dragged out here so 
Yeah. And, and just for the listeners, what he's referring to is Ontario, Canada, and then New Brunswick, Canada, just to give you a reference yes. where we are in the world. So basically what I'm hearing is, you know, you started out good with a bunch of stuff and then you got into trouble, hit rock bottom, bankruptcy is not easy for anyone, but built yourself back up from there. And it, it was like, a very, 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 very important process in me being a more um, satisfied. Like I needed, I needed to have that significant failure to okay. show me my weaknesses. I don't know if you want to. No, I want. Let's go on that. that. Like, why? Yeah. Why? A lot of people say failures are failures, and that's a bad thing. But I, I'm along the same lines with you. Like, my, the best opportunities are failures or obstacles. So, why mm. was that failure good for you? I had completely tied my identity or value as a person into my ability to accomplish and do projects. Right. And they were connected intrinsic, like they were very connected and having the failure um, allowed me to separate who I am as a person, who I am to my partner, my family, my friends, my value versus like what I can accomplish in business as a, as a, as a separate thing. Cause before I was motivated to do things because it felt like my, you know, I had an existential, existentially, my value was on the line. Ah, so, so I it had, was personal. You made business personal. I wasn't doing deals because they were good. I was doing deals because I felt like I needed to prove to everyone that I could do deals. Ah, interesting. Um, which, uh, so, so being able to separate those two out just makes you be able to take a deep breath and feel a heck of a lot less anxious about what's happening in your life. Um, like, like, like what you just said there, I think is very key because that is a common trait for ADHD entrepreneurs and people of mine. Like we really bring it personal and we kind of connect the two together, but we have to understand we have to separate them. Mm -hmm. And that, that's really good for you to, to observe that on your own. You know, that plus a whole bunch of counseling. <laughs> well, we can't do everything alone. That's yeah, the one yeah. thing that I've learned with me, um, like you yourself, you got partners now, um, we got to stick to what we do best and let other mm -hmm. people do what they do best, the stuff that we don't like or can't do or should not do. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think just with the show, not the show notes, but the, the notes that you, the prep notes uh, you put in there, that's one of your, your piece of advice for everyone on there is failure in your business, not a personal failure, which is a, is a very key and monumental observation on your part jonathan but the next line is this this blows me away i never even thought of it it's the best earning opportunity not learning earning opportunity did you mean that to be earning or do we forget the no other? i meant that to be learning but i'm dyslexic adhd so uh yes well, I, but I think that's honestly, huge it's, it's true though both it's been that's true. monstrous earning yeah. opportunity can you want to expand on that yeah. a little bit um like, you know, for a couple of years after the bankruptcy, I did not want to tell anyone what had happened. You mm -hmm. know, I just kind of skirted around it and, oh, oh yeah, we wound it down and blah, 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 blah. Um, but then it didn't take me, it took me a few years to realize that, um, you know, people, yeah, being genuine is something that I strive for. It's a value of mine. Mm -hmm. Most people, I've realized that people really appreciate it. Um, it you know, it builds trust fast. So being able to show like what I had learned through my hard lessons and how that uh, influences how I move forward, the caution that I take, the risks that I take, the people that I trust and reach out to, you know, I learned a lot of hard lessons in that experience. That's that story had a, a lot of, you know, I, I, I call that that basically my, you know, four or five million dollar MBA program that I did. Right. And um, and I. You know, before that, I had a liberal arts degree, not that useful for business, I mean, kind of, but it was a really, really expensive and really, really important lessons that I needed to learn where like going forward now, you know, the trust that people have, uh, especially like the first thing I do is tell them about my story now. It's literally the first thing I do when I meet somebody new. Awesome. Like, and think this is what, this is what I, this is what we did. This is what I learned. This is how I behave. This is, you know, now that I've learned all this, this is how it affects how yeah. we move forward on projects. Um, yeah. I think that's instrumental because that's how I approach with my engineering company. That makes it more real. And we actually, you're, you're demonstrating to the people that you've learned, you've grown, you've experienced it. You just didn't learn it in the book or from an MBA or it's all theoretical. 
like it makes it more real. And then the right customers will be drawn to that for you. And the wrong yeah. customers won't care for that. So it's a good gauge. So I really, I really respect that you're open and honest with that. And I know if you came to me, if I was dealing with you, I'd really appreciate that honesty and openness because I'd rather deal with people who have tried, failed, or tried and succeeded and had the challenges. So that's good on you. And, and you know, there's a lot of glorification of early success in the entrepreneurial world. But then when you really dig down into it, the guys that are, and I've read a few like uh, essays about this, like statistically, most entrepreneurs aren't successful till midlife. Correct. And, and it's because they, they screwed up a bunch of things, you know, yeah. and they, they learn, they learn what works. They learn what doesn't, they learn their management style. They learn how to run a team. They learn to navigate the system. You know, there's, there's a lot you need to know instinctually not just theoretically, but you need to need to internalize it and yeah. really need to know it to be able to make good decisions on the fly in real time under stress. Right. And instinctively is a good big one. That's very heavy for us ADHD guys and yeah. girls and people. Um, so to go on what you're also saying, uh, we uh, get successful in midlife or 10, 15, 30 years from now. Is just remember, there's a big long list of statistics was I like don't quote me on these but it's relatively along these lines 75 to 80 percent of cust, uh, businesses close after three years and then 90 percent are closed by year five mm -hmm. so I got some theories on that but that's basically it so the ones that continue beyond five mm -hmm. I think we're the re really resilient ones because I've had a couple of buddies come and say I want to start my own company and I told one there's no way because his first time he gets kicked down and pushed into the mud he's going to stay down, crawl away. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know about you, John, but for me, I am bruised all over my body for how many times I got kicked down, rolled over, but I got up every time, but I figured out why I got knocked down and I avoided the next time. So I'm just finding new ways to get kicked down. Mm -hmm. It's basically it. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Uh, so teneo <laughs> is the Latin uh, word for tenacious. Uh, basically, ah. you know, the exact definition is to not give up, to keep trying. And that's basically my main redeeming skill. I'm not a genius. <laughs> I can hyper focus and yeah. to learn something and I and I and I just don't give up easy. It's 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 to a fault to some degree. Like, you know, I go, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, like if you have a two wheel drive track, you go 20 feet too far in the mud. If you have a four wheel drive track, you go 100 feet too far into the mud. You know, I know I have done that in my past. So uh, relationships, uh, business, you know, yeah. so not giving up is my main redeeming thing. It's, it's also something I have to be very aware of that sometimes I can just keep trying when maybe it's, you we know, should stop, plug, stop, yeah, yeah. stop banging your head. But that being said, nothing good. You can't make anything happen without nothing just happens easily. No, like no. if you, like we had, you know, I've had so many challenges and I usually have more faith than anyone else in the room that we should keep pushing ahead. And then, Many times there's a prize for going through the door, you know, pushing through and being there. And then people are like, oh, that happened. It was real successful. It's like, yeah. But it was a after, pain to after get there. about after about a thousand no's, <laughs> we got to a yes. Yeah. Yeah. To, that's that's awesome. I like Teneo, tenacious, Latin for tenacious, tenacious and resilient persistence is what I call myself. Uh, always persistently resilient. Mm -hmm. Um so how about this? Do you mind if we go back to your ADHD a little bit here? Yeah. Um, what is your biggest ADHD challenge as an entrepreneur? Uh, I'm not a detail person mm -hmm. is one. Okay. I'm going to give you two. So one is I'm not a detail person. I am, I am. And I, and, and I, at my company, um, I am not allowed to touch any paper. Right. So you're talking about versus paperwork, detailed paperwork or like the back administrative end, stem back administrative, stuff administrative. I'm really, really weak at it. So building a strong administrative detail focused team is what I've had to do to be accomplished. Right. Um, I love my team right now. Best thing I've ever happened, both in the water park and in the construction and real estate business. So um, you accommodated your executive functioning deficits by paperwork. And then the plus uh, our brain doesn't like mundane, repetitive stuff, especially after we've figured it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Figuring it out is fun. So that's a, you know, that's a good way to accommodate your executive functioning deficits. And the your last thing, I, the last, um, sorry, weaknesses. Oh, ADHD. Uh, yeah. So what happened with Taneo, the original Taneo, Taneo, um, uh, the, the real estate property, uh, the mm -hmm. real estate investment group. Um, 
I love new ideas, not doing the next new idea mm-hmm. is like the challenge painful. for me. Not, <laughs> it's painful. Oh, it's brutal. And, and I tell my team, unless I've talked about something a hundred times, correct. just ignore it. I'm just verbal processing out yeah. loud, yeah. you know, until if I've said it a hundred times, it's going to happen. I guarantee it. Yeah. yeah Cause you know, now it's only, no longer impulsive. We put yeah, some thought it, into it. <laughs> it. No matter how weird it sounds, it's going to happen. If, if I've said it 99 times, just don't get too worked out. Don't get too stressed out yet. I need to process things out loud. I want to hear everybody's feedback. You know, mm-hmm. right now I have a team that's pretty good at saying no. Which is and a fantastic I, gift for you. I need that. Yes, and I don't feel offended when you tell me no. Right. I'll probably try to figure out how to get you to a yes. And it might drive you nuts, but that's the process of turning. A, and I, you know, my, uh, my past business partner, um, uh, um, great, great, great man, older, um, you know, uh, I don't know, he's been an entrepreneur for like 40 years. And he always said, Jonathan, the worst to the problem is my good ideas and my bad ideas, my really good ideas, my really bad ideas kind of look the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Anyway. So like being able to run those ideas through a team that all have different values and insights mm-hmm. and, and filter them and be able to like, to have that good sounding board, a uh, group of entrepreneurs who I trust in the community too. Now I'm going out with a friend on Tuesday to talk to him about, Jeepers, how big should we grow this construction thing? You know, yeah. the guy with a pretty big team himself. And uh, and I started with an ADHD coach. Anyway, but, but but saying no for me to new ideas is is probably my biggest challenge. Um, uh, because, you, you know, you need the stability in your operating of your businesses yeah. before you can go do new things. Ironically, the more stable and uh, smoothly everything's going the more I'm like oh my brain's like going to wander into the new ideas side oh, of get boredom know. and then get themselves into trouble yeah, yeah. so uh, you know I picked up a lot of I, uh, uh, my partner Chelsea she, I have like a lot so you know what it doesn't it's not going to destabilize the business if I buy another dirt bike or no. start a maple no. syrup thing <laughs> so so being able to distract myself with some new ideas that are that are not yeah. uh so um, when you have your team saying no to you, it's not saying your idea is bad. All they're doing is making your idea into something that can be achieved. Yeah, it's usually along the line of like, maybe not the right thing and not the right time. Correct. Not that it's a bad idea. And sometimes it is a bad idea. Correct. But but like and, being and I think able to You're right. Is, is it the right time now or right time later? Because we're yeah. our brain just likes now or, now or not now, right? Yeah. So the one thing you did say, I want to point out, you said you like to process things out loud. Okay. And I think the other thing too, is with the ADHD brain, we have a hard time processing things internally. So us talking out loud is actually, it's just a process for us to hear it, not necessarily to communicate to others. So it's a good way that you've figured out without realizing it. That's the best way you can process information is by talking out loud. People might think you're crazy, but that's fine. That's how it, it, works it, it refines you. the idea. Every time I get a little bit of feedback from somebody that, that refines the idea mm-hmm. more and more, either refines it to the point where I'm like, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a no go. Yeah. Or, or I start to, you know, everyone's starting to go, yeah, that's not a bad idea, you know, but yeah. I, I'm not, I don't write things down. You know, it's definitely a, somewhat of a weakness, but at the same time, you know, you get a lot of feedback telling a lot of people the same idea again and again and again. Mm-hmm. It helps you get to a good idea pretty quick or, 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 you know, or to differentiate a good idea from a bad idea. Yeah, to work it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. So what ADHD symptom have you transformed into your strength for I'm success? A, I'm, a, I'm a big picture person. I'm, I have to start with the big picture first. Um, that's why we've been able to add a lot of value for investors um, in multi in, in, in real estate out here. Cause you know, I go to like, this is like the pin, like we kind of specialize in 1970s, three-story wood walk-ups. They're old, tired, not very good condition building, but I know, you know, we've done enough of the projects now. We're like, I know where we can get this thing. We can get this to top of the market, 1700 unit. Um, people are going to want to live in this like new building. That's not new, you know, costs mm-hmm. less than a new building. And so being able to start at the at the at the end of the big picture 
to be able to address population trends, rent trends, vacancy trends, hiring trends, immigration trends, to be able to point out the whole big picture and why it makes sense to be there and where we can get with the project. Okay, now we start backwards, then we go backwards from there. This is what like the optimal value could be at the end of a 12 month reno. Then we work our way back because a lot of realtors and a lot of contractors are specialized. They, they don't have the big picture. And they get all, right. I see you wouldn't, people come, a lot of people this week because we got rent, we got rent caps in New Brunswick for the first time ever. And, um, and a lot of people were buying these buildings because we didn't have any rent control before this bump up the rent 200 bucks, but there was no strategic plan there. You know, I refuse to, to, you know, I will not leave 50 year old plumbing in the building. Right. You know, I just won't like it's, I know what I, my first building I bought was 200 years old. I know all about that nightmare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so, so giving kind of like a real, like a really solid big picture plan of where we're going to, it helps you because you start there and then you work right back. This is how much we can pay for the asset. This is we can pay for renos. This is what adding a laundry does to your rental income, to your NOI, to the overall value. Like, so being able to push out the whole project, people have found really valuable and, and, and want to have uh, my team involved in their projects. And, so and right a very, now- A visionary, you know, a visionary. Yeah. The so, visionary, the vision helps big right. time. Yeah. Um, and that's where a lot of us ADHD, we find we get trapped into doing non-visionary big picture work, getting stuck in the details and the minutia. Um, and, and I know for me, when I, the more I'm more bogged down with that stuff, I get really frustrated and upset and tired yeah. and just don't want to do stuff. So yeah, as long as we can stay in, you know, in our zone of genius, whatever you want to talk, it, the stuff and, that and, you're and really good at, that's the best I don't have value way. at that level. Beautiful because phrase. I, I'm the worst paperwork form filler out or yeah. guy you've ever met in your life. Yeah. You know, and that's a really good key. No, you don't provide value doing those tasks and you don't provide value to your team to do it or to your clients. So and I, like and I, I do is I can just get out of everyone's way so I don't distract them and cause more problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's been, uh, that's oh, been pretty key. This is fantastic. What's your next success project? What are you working on next? Um, well, we're building out the world's herd of, uh, the world's largest herd of the world's giant largest unicorns. <laughs> So, it's just the water so, park stuff this is the water park yeah you know i totally stumbled onto it i built a trampoline park a few years ago I was involved in that sold out right before covid and anyway we got involved in that we did one in uh, halifax last year and despite uh, a lot of stumbles to get it going it was a real successful and so uh, i see an opportunity for us to uh to build that out into a to a fairly sizable cross-country brand so we're right. doing another park in ottawa this year we're looking at acquiring a few putting some more locations in um yeah but trying to find that balance between doing new things which i love to do and you know hopefully i have a kid soon so and that i i don't trying to find that balance i got to figure out the balance but but yeah that's that's what we're trying to do is build out that that uh yeah, I think Water everyone struggles with trying to get that balance. Yeah. Well, cool. But I really, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, we're running out of time here, but thank you very much for sharing your story here. Um, lesson number one, I think failure is your best earning lesson. So mm -hmm. learn from it. Teneo is Latin for tenacious. And to th your thinking progress uh, process, sorry, keep thinking out loud and that's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, John. I appreciate your time here and for sharing your story. Thanks a ton, Andre. I appreciate it. Yep. And to you, the listener, thanks for listening. If you like what you heard today, subscribe to the podcast, please. And if you've, what you heard is beneficial to someone, or please share Jonathan's story by sharing this episode with two or three people that you know. And you can also give me a rating and comments below on where you get your podcast. And I want to hear from you. I want to hear your story. Please email me at questions at the impulsive thinker.com or at the website. Thanks for listening. And thanks again, Jonathan. Take care.